No tears for Father William Cunningham. How do you say goodbye to Father William Cunningham? You don't. You just get involved in what he was involved in. How many tears have been shed for Father William Cunningham? No one could ever count them. Why should you? There are too many. If a tear had been shed for every deed Father Cunningham had done in this community and in the community of the world, then not enough tears would have been shed. Frankly, tears are inevitable, but are tears necessary for Father Cunningham? Absolutely not. What is necessary to say goodbye to Father Cunningham is to get involved in what Father Cunningham was doing to get involved in the projects that he initiated and to get involved in keeping your focus on hope. Will we miss Father Cunningham? That's another inevitable. But if you would like to connect and stay connected with the spirit of Father William Cunningham, then connect yourself to Focus Hope and keep your focus on hope. Connect yourself to stand involved with senior citizens and making sure that they get meals. Connect yourself to the children who live without hope and help them find hope in their sea of despair. Connect yourself to the hungry and making sure that they have food on the table. To those who are without clothes and make sure they have garments. And when you connect yourself to those projects, sure, in a physical sense, you will miss Father William Cunningham. But in a spiritual sense, you'll be closer than ever. I am confident that one day, Father William Cunningham will be named a saint in the church. Until that day, if you were to ask Father William Cunningham, what project could I get involved in, Father? In lieu of a tear, you know what he would say? He would say, The program for the elderly poor is one that needs volunteers year-round because the, um, uh, now, let me, let me give you one case. You know how many times old people walk with that cane with the four feet on it? Mm -hmm. That little crawl-type uh, cane. Here's the, this is a not an atypical case. This little old lady now, all on the heavy side, and she uh, marches with this uh, the cane in her left hand. She'll go uh, once a month. She'll come to our center on the on the west side, and she'll get her foods in the little bass cart there, and get them all set, and goes to the checkout counter, and they box her things up, and she'll take this box and take it over to the corner behind the checkout and ask the uh, uh, clerk that she can leave it there. And she takes a little plastic bag. That's the honest to God's truth. She takes a little plastic bag and she'll go over and take a few cans of this and a little of that out of her box of foods that belong to her that she's going to take home. And then she disappeared out in the street. And we just I just discovered it this month. She's been doing this for months. At two hours, three hours later, she comes back. Empty plastic bag. She's over, taking a few more things out of her little box, put them in the plastic bag, and away she go. Three times. Month after month. I think probably uh, no one really thought to ask her. They probably figured, a little eccentric. Uh, Eleanor told me about this. She said, do you know that? The little old woman is so proud. She uses her senior pass on the dot bus. She takes what she can carry all the way home, comes all the way back, gets a little more, all she can carry back home. Because she's too proud to ask Focus Hope for a volunteer to drive her home with her food. It's too heavy for her to carry on a bus, of course and with her uh, bad legs or whatever that caused her to walk with that little cane, she can't do that. That's indicative, though, while it's exceptional in, in the sense of coming and going with the bus, it's indicative of the pride 
of old people that don't want to ask anybody to help them or to give them food or anything else. That's what I meant earlier on, a mojo up about the depression ethic of old people. It's just, they're too proud to ask. Now here, uh, I'm saying to, to our audience tonight, if you want to help, it doesn't cost you anything. If you got a car and you, and you want to help of an evening or a morning or you're retired, you want to help somebody, you can come by and pick up one of these seniors and take them home with a little bit of food. And just that gesture takes maybe half an hour and a little bit of gas is a major contribution. Folks don't have a car, have to pay a jitney guy a couple of bucks to get a little bit of groceries home. You do it for, for contribution. That same person might be the one that you want to do our share with the senior thing for. Not only take a moment with a little bit of food, but what the heck. You got an extra few bucks in your pocket, take them out shopping, buy them some extra things, show them a little love, a little care, and again, give me your telephone number. Because <laughs> nothing so good for the seniors to know they got somebody they can call and spend some time talking to and talking to and talking to. They go on and on sometimes. But uh, it, that, you see what, what's involved here is not just helping somebody get their food home, putting your arm around this person a little bit, and then letting them know somebody in this big world cares about me. I have a friend. I can call. They have a car. They can take me to the doctor. I don't have to be afraid at night. I've got a friend. So that share with the seniors much more than sharing that $50 to take them shopping. It, it really amounts to uh, uh, to sharing our hearts with them. And if, if people knew, as you did from the, the, the marvelous little thing you told me earlier, that you, that you got involved in helping that nice woman that was home burned. If people knew what kinds of rewards we get from this, we, eh, the world would be perfect. Everybody would be helping. Uh, I don't want to say to people, do this because you're going to feel good. I don't want to tell folks, do this because it's going to make Christmas better for you or you're going to feel better about yourself but I do want to say to them uh, you go out of your way a little bit help one of these old folks or a mother with a lot of kids that need some help and you share with them God's going to bless you and you are going to find that the gift you gave is multiplied a hundred times back to you you can't give enough for what you're going to get back if, you, if your heart's right on this one that's a fact, and you know that from what you shared with me. Father William Cunningham from Focus Hope. Father Cunningham, it's been our pleasure, and we wish you uh, the best and the blessings. Thanks, Mojo, and uh, blessings on you. It's good to have you back in Detroit. It's good and, being back. And uh, come down and visit and uh, maybe talk to our youngsters at Fast Track if you have the time to do that. I'll be there. God bless. Shed a tear? Sure you will. But also lift a hand. And you too, go down and visit Focus Hope. And keep your focus on hope. And if you do that, you'll always have a focus on Father William Cunningham. The co-founder with Eleanor Josidas of Focus Hope. May God bless your spirit. May God bless the moments that you've spent with us. May God forever keep you near us. And if we stay near the work that you so eloquently dedicated yourself to, not only will we stay close to God, we will always be near Father William Cunningham. And as your spirit crosses over into another dimension, it was written long ago, love knows not its own depths unto the hour of separation. Long live the spirit of Father William Cunningham. <laughs>